You know guys, at the end of a build, there's always the time to sit down, take a look and reflect on A, what you accomplished, and then there's that other thing, and that is to look at and see what you could have done better, and the mistakes you made, and try to categorize them and lock them into your brain so you don't do it again. It, 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 it usually doesn't work because you, you wind up getting it or you get in the heat of battle and something else goes wrong because you're focused on not making that other mistake. That's woodworking. That's life. But nevertheless, here she is. Now, as most of you know, we had a lot of snow. Uh, couldn't get in for a while. And we had a roof issue, roof leaking, so that didn't help. And with all the snow, we couldn't get up and get the old windows that we've got. We've got some windows came out of an old building. They're nice, little wavy bubble glass. So our glass is nice and clean here, you know what I mean? But when we get to that, we'll show it to you. What we'll do is just do a separate webisode to fill in on the... Uh, on glazing the glass. But in the meantime, there is one out on YouTube where we're showing you how to do it. I'm going to reemphasize it's Sculpty clay, and we get it at Michael's or one of the craft stores. And I'm a, but I'm going to make sure you understand. You'll see me roll it up in my hands to get it warm so it works better. Don't microwave it. If you microwave this stuff, it'll turn into a brick. Now I'm going to tell you how I know that. You'll enjoy this. Sherry usually glazes all the glass. And uh, so I'm in a hurry. She couldn't do this one, and I'm in a hurry to get it done. I didn't read the thing. So I go, I'm like, hey, this is, I, if I microwave it, it's going to make it soft. And I can, well, it did. All for about three minutes. And then I reach over, and it's just, it's like a brick. So don't microwave it, okay? Now, time to reflect on issues. Number one, you saw all the, all the effort we went through on these bottom doors to make sure we had that chatoyance right. I've been at this a long time. And I was really tickled because I thought that book match was going to work. And everything I did showed me it was. Well, I was wrong. Take a look. Great figure here died over there. Now the issue here was, I, I, as you recall, I was trying to get that arc going in there. Well, it didn't work. Now John, John McGuire, AKA Magoo on the forum, you've got two raised panels that are book matched. Be careful. Rick, Rick Good, you're building one. Watch it, be careful. Now, Am I going to let that go? <laughs> you know better than that. I ain't no way. It isn't bad, but it ain't me. So what am I going to do? Your first guess would be I'm going to remake these doors. No, I'm not. I'm going to try something. I got Big Bob to send me another piece of material. And one of the things is my curl in this piece of material is going straight across. That's a good thing. Because one of the things I'm going to do, which I should have done, is, is I'm going to slip match it. Now Bob says one of the things he likes to do, if you look at the end of this piece of wood, you're going to see the growth rings going this direction. And of course, that's the outside of the tree. Bob said he likes to always put the outside of the tree out. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to put these doors through the drum sander. I'm going to sand the raised portion down as far as I can so that without, hopefully without hitting my rails and stiles. Now before I do that, I'm going to take some 80 and sand the finish off the front. 
if you put a piece that's finished through a drum sander, what you're going to find happening is, is it's going to get hot and gum up your sandpaper. Then I'm going to resaw this and make me two veneers. And I'm going to veneer just the elevated portion of the panel. Now how do I know to do that? I ain't going to tell you. But it's experience. All right. Now, here's a couple questions. Oh my goodness. Isn't it always the case when you veneer something, you want to do the same thing to the front, I mean to the back as you do the front. That's absolutely correct. But I think we've got enough thickness in these raised panels and material here, I think I can get by with it. We're going to try it. All right. You know, the worst case scenario is I would have to remake the two raised panels. That being the case, I would remove the rails, keep the styles. Got it right, didn't I? Keep the styles because these are all matched. There you go. So that's one of the things. And you know, that's okay, because, and when I did that, I kept thinking, this, this usually doesn't work, I can't see this working. But I went ahead, because my thought was, if it don't work, then that's another area to look at, of saying, how do we recover when something goes wrong? Because it inevitably does. You know, there's always something. So that's how I'm going to cure that. Now. And I've told you to sit down and reflect about any of the issues you had, any little mistakes or whatever, and learn from them. I don't have to do that. Not around here. If I make a mistake, it's absolutely positively going to be pointed out to me. Trust me on that. Let me show you something. My nails don't line up exactly right. You know, in the back where nobody's ever going to see it, these no, nails ain't exactly right. Now the back is in, and like I showed you, notice the back comes down below the bottom case. I've got one center screw right here kind of holds everything together. Doesn't take a lot. Now, you notice also that I just got two screws on either side. Now, I've got the sides nailed, so why did I use screws here? Well, when you're moving this thing, I can remove this back until it gets in wherever it's going and I can put nails in it or I can just leave these black screws. The point, it, the problem is, is getting a hold to a corner cabinet good, being able to lift it easily. It can be tough. So this way I can pop the screws out and we can reach in the front and get a hold to the shelf. And then thanks to John McGuire McD McD again, whoops. I need better wheels. Even an old dog learns a new trick. Remember when we put the latches in the doors? I've always done this. But I've also always used thicker door material. Never gave it a second thought. The width on the bottom of here, which you can't see on the camera, is almost three quarters. And I've always thought, I just kind of didn't think about it like I should have, and I thought to myself, you know, if, if I had a thinner door, that, that just wouldn't work. But since I didn't, I didn't bother about it. Well, John emails and he says, hey, 
Would it hurt if you put those in the face of this thing? Light bulb went off. Whoa, wait a minute. You know what? That's probably where they should go to start with. So instead of being in the backs of the door, they're in the face of the edge. So when you would shut this door, that latch would move this way. So again, old dog learns a new trick. Now let's answer some questions. All right, Monty, you emailed me and you asked about a list of materials, tools, router bits, and hardware. Yes. And I think that's going to be emailed out. I got one of these. Okay, so that, that's a yeah. We've about got the indexing caught up, so all of this will be indexed. Now I mentioned again, when we glaze the glass, and when I do these doors, we're going to film it as a separate webisode and put it with this so that you have it. We're not going to be replacing the next build with that webisode. It's just going to be an addition. All right. Marty and Ace out here, there was some discussions, uh, I think it was Marty, on overspray when I was spraying the cabinet. And Marty asked when he's using a water-based finish and he's got a lot of pieces in the room he seems to have an issue with overspray he's right here's why a solvent base like a shellac melts into the other in other words that's the reason you know if a little bit of overspray settles on it and the finish is wet, it will dissolve that overspray and it'll flow out. Water base doesn't do that. See, see the thing with, with, with a solvent base is the resins and solvent are dissolved. Just like shellac, like the alcohol completely dissolves the flakes, the resin, then when the solvent evaporates off, it leaves the film. That not the case with a water base. A water base, to understand it, is kind of, it, its resin is in suspension. It's like billions of little teeny BBs that are floating in a liquid. And what happens is when you spray it on, those little BBs come together and glue themselves together to make the film. They never totally dissolve. So the overspray that gets in the air and settles down on it will not melt back into it. Now the question he had was prompted because I had a room full of stuff I was spraying. I explained to him, I will spray that room full for the first, even with the solvent base, you know, for the first couple coats. Then once I get to the final, this was all sprayed separately so that we didn't have that issue. The other thing is, and even with that, we've got really good airflow in here. We've got a big fan, and I showed you the uh, air exchange. So that's, you know, if you're spraying a water base, that's a good thing to do, is try not to spray too many pieces uh, at one time. Okay, right now. now it's time to talk about our next build. And this is the low boy. Now, most of you have gone out there on the forum and you've looked at it, and we chose the big one. That's a good choice. It's basically, it's a low boy, but it's basically the bottom of a high boy. So I got to thinking about this, and I'm like, you know, if we're going to do that, we might as well kill a couple birds with one stone. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to build a cherry high boy as we build the mahogany low boy. Now the reason I'm, there's two reasons I'm going to do it. The only thing is, is that the high, and it's a flat top high boy, it's not the broken arch. The flat top high boy uses exactly this same crown and we know how to do that. So the only thing really we got to do to make a high boy from the low boy is add the case sides and the drawers. 
and we want to get in the drawers really good in this one. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I think it'll be neat. The other th reason I want to do it is I'm actually doing it out of Curly Cherry. And uh, a lot of you guys out there, I think it was old school or one of you out there was asking me about finishing Curly Cherry. And so this will be a chance that, <clears throat> that we can pull the mahogany, finishing the mahogany and the Curly Cherry and because th th these are two very popular woods, particularly the curly cherry, you know, and dealing with it. So I think that that's going to make, you know, and it's not a whole lot effort on my behalf to bring them both in. So this will give you a whole lot of education.